Genesis chapter 4. Amen. We are on a mission in Victor Ivy City Church. Amen. And I just want to ask this question, just throw it out to all of us this morning. Why does God continue to give us promises? Why does God continue to give us promises? And not only that, why are promises important? You know, and, and I've, I understand that, and I know this, without the promises, we're just living but without direction. And the meaning of promises, when God gives you a promise, you know what it does? It keeps us expecting. It keeps us focused. It keeps our mind on a mission. It keeps our heart excited about what God is doing, right? It's what wakes us up in the morning. Can you get an amen? If I could get my monitors up just a little bit, uh, Gustavo, please. It wakes us up. It gets us going. It keeps us from stopping. Are you with me? The promises tell us to get back in the ring. It tells us, don't give up. Don't lose the, the, the excitement of what I have for your life. See, there's always something better and bigger when it comes to the promises of God. Are you with me? There's always something better and bigger when it comes to to the promises of God. There's always something better, something greater, more than we can ever think, imagine, or even understand sometimes, because a lot of times we don't even understand when God's doing something, it's hard to even explain to people, are you with me this morning? What I want to talk about this morning is mega promises. Mega promises. God has mega promises for every one of you. But not only that, he has mega promises for our church, for our city, right? And this is what I love about the city of Chicago because we live in a mega city. A mega city with mega promises. A mega city with a lot of people. There's people everywhere. I was out there yesterday. There's people all over the, all over the streets, all over the blocks. There's, there's neighborhoods and, 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 and areas. There's just so many people. But one thing I love about Chicago is this. When you talk about mega city, you're talking about mega mentalities. What about mega disciples? Mega believers, right? Everything that we must do has to be with a mega mentality, right? What about a mega church? I see a mega church. We're believing for a mega church, a base church, a city church that's mega, that's reaching everywhere all over the state of Illinois not just in the city but all over that word mega when you when you talk about that word mega it means this it's a unit in metric systems of denoting a factor of one million say one million it has the unit symbol m that's where we get the word megabyte mega word megapixel mega megahertz Megaton, come on somebody, you know what a megaton is? One million tons of TNT. It's a megaton. We, we just had a megaton of the Holy Ghost this morning. Hello. Mega death. So all these words come out of the word mega. Mega comes from the ancient Greek word meaning megas. That's what it means, megas. It literally means great. Say that, great. It's where we get the word mega millions, right? Millions of millions of millions means mega millions. See, and we serve a God of mega proportions. Everything that God does in your life is mega. It's bigger than you can even imagine or even think. When you talk about God, it has to be bigger, greater, and bigger than anything you've ever understood. Because God is awesome. Amen. Are you with me? Genesis chapter 4. Do you have it? Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. It says this. Now Adam, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, and this time his brother Abel. 
Now, Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Say that, a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, say that, if I do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at your door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field... Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, and the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out from me from the ground. So now you're a curse from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its fruit to you. And a fugitive and vagabond, you shall be on earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out of this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive. Say fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and born Enoch. And he built a city, say a city. And he called the name of that city after the name of his son Enoch. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. When it comes to the promises of God, measure the obedience and not the results. Measure the obedience. And not the results. See, we know the story about Adam and Eve. We all know the story, right? We've heard the story many times. They had it all. They were blessed. See, they were blessed. They lived good. They were made in the image of God. And we know this, that it was because of deception. The serpent slivered his way into their life. Lied to them. Deceived them. And because of their disobedience, they were disobedience to God's order. God told them, he told them, don't eat of this tree. You can have everything in the, in the garden, just you can't have this tree. You can't have this fruit. Deception came, they ate the fruit, and still today we suffer the consequences of Adam's sin. Still today. Well, if you look at this context, Adam and Eve had a son, had two sons, Cain and Abel. Abel took care of the sheep. Cain worked the ground. Each one had a very important role. Each one were very significant in God's plan for their life and for all of mankind. They were very significant, right? The, the Bible tells us that in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord, and Abel brought the first fruit of his flock, their fat. But the Lord respected Abel's and not Cain's. Meaning this, God was not pleased with what Cain brought. It was his fruit. The it wasn't his first fruit. It was part of his fruit. It was part of his vineyard. But he respected Abel's, because Abel brought his best. 
You know, when you come to God, when it comes to serving God, you got to bring your best. Are you with me this morning? When you bring, look at, when you bring your best, God will honor your best. God will, will bless your best. Are you with me? He will bless your best. See, and we know this, as a man, we desire respect. Any men of God in the house? I'm going to just throw this in there for free this morning. Wives, respect your husband. Oh, I, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear that many amens. Men of God. I said, wives, respect your husband. Respect your husband. There's too many men of God that have given up because they don't feel respected. Good men, faithful men. And because the wife has not given them the respect that they deserve. And I know this. Let me tell you something. I don't want this to be a, a, a marriage seminar, but we, you know, maybe one day we'll have one. But I'll tell you one this. It wasn't until the wife... When my wife respected me, something happened to me inside. The devil could no longer lie to me, confuse me, tell me I couldn't be anything. When my wife respected me, there was a fire that came upon me. Now I'm a man. Now I can lead. Are the husbands excited this morning? Tell your wife, respect me, woman. No, don't say that. Don't say that. But something happened to Cain. He brought, he brought what he thought was good to God. And God, God basically turned away and says, I don't really want this. It's no good because it's not your best. And he never recovered. We read the scripture and I, I read it over and over. Cain never recovered from this. And God even seen his face because then he started to trip. How many know that sometimes we'll start to trip? Face down, sad, con the Bible says his countenance, right? Let's, let's, let's read. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your countenance falling? If you do well, say do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. It's basically saying, listen, I might have rejected your offering, but I haven't rejected you. You're still a man. You're still my chosen son. But you got to make a choice. Tell your neighbor, make a choice. That's... You know, this morning, I just feel like that's, somebody needed to hear that this morning. If you do right, church, and continue to move forward, do right and move forward. Say that. Do right. Move forward. Do, I know you made a mistake. I know you might have stumbled a little bit. You might, have, might, not got a, you might not have it all together. But just do right and move forward. That's a word for somebody. Because God has made up promises for you this morning. Big promises. Big things. Say big things. I love the context of this story. Because Cain just couldn't get it. He allowed sin to once again rule and reign in his heart, in his life again. And actually the Bible says he got his brother into a place where, where he was able to deceive him and lie to him. He was probably telling him, hey, come out here to the field. Come out here to my vineyard. Come out here and help me, brother. Come out here and help me work. Leave the sheep a little, leave the sheep for now. Come out here. And he found him in a vulnerable place. And the Bible says he killed his brother. He allowed sin to creep back into his heart, to deceive him once again, just like his father. And do you know this? When you allow sin to creep back and reign again in your heart, you're not just hurting yourself. You're hurting those that love you the most. You're hurting those that care about you. You're killing those that are there next to you. So when you sin, you're not sinning alone. You hurt those around you. And maybe 
it's not to the point of physically killing somebody, but you know that you can kill somebody by what you say? Oh, are you awake this morning? By what you say, you know, in the, you know the Bible says, let me give you the scripture. The Bible says this, the Bible in Proverbs chapter 18, 21, tells us the tongue has power, it has the power of life and death. And those that love it will eat its fruit. This holds true whether we're speaking of spiritual, physical, emotional, whatever life and death it is. See, God asked Cain, where's your brother? Which gives us that famous line. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I responsible for another man? Why should I be concerned about what he's doing? Right? That's not my concern. Do you know that that's the spirit of this age that happened at that moment, at that very time? Right? That spirit came upon the world. It was a spirit. I'm just concerned about me, my family, my things, my issues. Right? I don't know about what's going on around me. I really don't care about the next man. I'm worried about what I got going on. I got a lot going on. I got problems on my own. It's a spirit. See, it's a spirit. See, that spirit ruled Cain. It was a spirit of murder and the spirit of selfishness. Selfishness basically is egocentric. It means self-seeking, self-serving, self-obsession, self-absorption, right? Self-regard, self-interest, self-love, lack of consideration, right? Thoughtlessness, regardlessness, insensitivity, greedy, hello. In other words, I'm looking out for the number one, me. You know, we're dealing with this today. In every city, in every country, all over the world, people don't want to have to deal with other people. Oh, man, look at these people. We got to be careful. Are we victory outreach this morning? Oh, man, my city's messed up. Oh, man, you know, every time I walk, drive down, there's another shooting, another gunshot, another victim, right? Oh, it's the same old, same old. We're dealing with this. See, the ground was cursed by the blood of Abel at that moment. Cain, the Bible says, he leaves the presence of God. He goes to the land of Nod, east of Eden, and he built the first city. Say that, the first city. He went to the east side. Come on, somebody. He said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do my own thing. See, and in that city is where all the action takes place. Come on, somebody. You know that right now, as we're here stand, sitting in these chairs right now, you know that people from all over the world have come to our city? You guys know that? You guys paying attention, right? You guys know what's going on? I hope you're praying, right? All over the city, right? There's, there's, it's, it's the pride movement, right? It's the spirit of homosexuality. Hit our city hard. I know for me, I'm going to share with you. I shared with a couple guys in the green room. I'm driving last night. I'm driving. I'm picking. You guys know I drive, right? I'm picking people up. And, and, and something inside, man, said, just, you just need to go home. This is crazy out here. Boy, wow. People acting a fool. Right? They're, they're dressed all weird and they got their hair. And, and let me tell you something. We, 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 we love those that deal with that. You, just, you know, we, we love the person. We hate the sin. Hello. And we got to make that clear. It's, it's a sin just like drug addiction, just like any other sin. Right? But I'm driving around and I says, man, this, you know, and, and the Holy Spirit. And I picked this guy up. And he was a Mexican guy, spoke nothing but Spanish, and, he, and, he, and he, he's broken English. And I said, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to a prayer meeting. I said, oh, you are? I go, that sounds pretty good to me. He goes, well, you want to come? <laughs> he, he spoke that. I, mean, that. I go, I pulled up. I go, matter of fact, I will. Come on. 
Let's go to your prayer meeting. So I go, so we walk up these stairs, and it's just, you know, and, and you can hear the pastor, man, in Spanish. And he's getting down. And I'm, I'm excited, man. I go, wow. So I, do, I mean, my car, is, I have the flashers on. You know what I mean? I'm outside. I said, well, I always want to go see what they're doing. So I go up the stairs, and I walk in, and all of a sudden, they're all looking at me. Come on, we got about 20. They're in the living room. Who's this guy? You know, this American, or I don't know, this Manuel right here, right? And, I, and, I, and, I, and my Spanish is not very good, right? So, so I says, you know, I, I go, I'm, I'm just want to stop in and say hi. Keep praying. I go, pray for our city. And I go, you know what? Pray for me. Okay, okay. Amen, amen, ven para acá, you know. And they started praying the fire down. Man, I was right there. I was like, yes, Lord. I receive it. I need it. I need the Holy Ghost. Esther, man, I was, man, I was broken. I was broken. And I, and I walked out of there, and I got in my car. And then the very next person, from right there, I picked another person up. And he comes right out of the bar. He comes stumbling. And I says, okay, what the Holy Spirit is going to do now? I'm full of the power right now. Come on, somebody. Right? And, and, and he goes, he, but th this, is, this is how the Lord speaks. He'll use anybody. And he comes in, and, and, he, and I'm wiping my tears. And still, he's like, what's going on? I go, man, I just got full of the Holy Ghost. He goes, excuse me? <laughs> I go, I got full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I messed him up. He goes, Holy Ghost, right? He goes, you know, well, that's, he goes, that's amazing, right? Because it sounds like oh, it sounds it sounds like a great religious moment. I said, "Yeah, it was a religious moment, man. I'm I'm full of power right now." And he and then I and I go, "Man, he, then you know what he tells me? Watch this. You know what he tells me? He goes, he goes, what are you gonna do?" I go, "I don't know." He goes, he goes, I, he goes. Well, it's crazy out here. Why don't you just go home? He goes, go sit, spend some time with your family. He goes, you had a good moment. He goes, I know what's going on around here. He goes, this is not a good place for you right now. It was confirmation. God said, go home, go. And we, I went and picked up now. I go, come on, let's go have some, uh, let's go have some ice cream. We went and got some ice cream, spent some time. But I'm telling you, but I said all that, I don't know why, but it was fun. Amen? So, but listen, that was, you don't know what God's going to do. And I'm telling you, church, we got to get busy for God. People are coming from all over to this city. Why? Because this is a city that's known for violence. It's known for evil. It's known for sin. But the church, we need to rise up and take our place. It might be a mega city that they come for sin, but God has given this city mega promises. He's given us mega promises, a mega church, mega people, mega soldiers, women and women of God. We're not going to just stand around and let the world come to sin. No, they're going to hear the gospel. Can you get an amen? See, and, and that's kind of, it, there's, there's many challenges in our city. But there's also many promises. Can you get an amen? We serve a God of mega promises. See, the, in this city, in, in this city, even though people might say it's a certain way, there's many people still here that are standing up and pushing back the darkness. Can I get an amen? See, they always want to tell us about the statistics. Right? You guys know what I'm talking about? I had family call me. I mean, when I first came to Chicago, I mean, they would call me all the time. They go, are you Okay. I go, what do you mean am I okay? He go, oh, we just heard of all the murders. And oh, we, well, are you okay? You, just come back. Right? Anybody ever deal with that? From that? I says, no, I'm not coming back. I go, you need to stop listening to the fake news. Okay, we, we, have some, we have some murders, but we are not afraid. Come on, somebody. God has raised me up. That's why I came. You know, last, just last weekend, every weekend, uh, 59 shot, 6 killed. This weekend, 55 shot, 5 killed. Right? And, the, and the weekend's not even over, right? And, and once you put up the statistic, because I, I found it for you. Watch this. Watch this. This is as of today. 
2019 deadliest hoods. Look at who's number one. That should fire you up this morning. Come on, Brother Daryl. Don't get me mad at you, Daryl. That should fire someone. Anybody from Inglewood? Who lives around the neighborhood? Right? Look at that should fire you up. Not in my hood. That should be you. That's what you should say, right? Not in my hood. Look at that. And my, I, Humble Park is up there. I'm mad. Hello. I'm mad. Hello. Right? We got to get excited. We got to get it. Look at it. And we got to stop just paying attention to this and use it as, as leverage. As, as like, okay, that's what's going on. Yes. Yeah, but th that's what the enemy wants me to see. That's what the enemy wants the world to discourage people, to, to make people get sad and down, right, and depressed, right? But we need to start putting up heavenly statistics. Right, okay, we had 59 shots, but also last Friday we had 60 ministered to, and we had, we had 20 salvations, right? And the week before that we had 60 ministered to, we had 15 salvations, and the street team went out and they won 16 souls, and the gang went out and they reached 16 young people. See, we got to change, we got to change the fake news and tell them the whole story. We don't need the credit, but our treasure's in heaven. Can you get an amen? Right? The angels are rejoicing for one salvation. We got to get back to, to, to winning souls. Right? We might have lost some, but we gained more. Hello. Heaven has gained more. See, the devil, he's a, he's a master at fake news. He's a master. Right? He wants us to put our, 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 our mind on that. Right? Well, God is saying, yeah, but I'm giving you real promises for the city of Chicago. Mega promises. Somebody say mega promises. So the sin of Cain basically started these, these mega cities. It was the curse of sin, violence, corruption. You can read it later. Because of sin, God placed a curse upon Cain. Made him a fugitive. Made him a mark. Cain was a mark. Hello. Hello. See that? He was a mark. He was the world's first fugitive. Come on, somebody. Right? What is a fugitive? A fugitive is, is somebody who has escaped from a place or is in hiding, especially to avoid arrest or persecution. An escapee, a runaway. He was the deserter. He was an abscounder. Hello, anybody used to abscound? Come on. He was quick to disappear. He was a transient. He was momentarily short-lived. It was brief. It was passing. He was here today and gone tomorrow. That's what a fugitive is. See, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 1, you don't have to turn there. It says, the wicked flee when no one is pursuing them. But the righteous are as bold as lions. It's like that person that when you talk to them, they're always guilty. Hello. Hello. Think everybody's talking about them. Everybody's pointing at them, right? People are saying stuff about me, man. I, right? They're first to say, I didn't do it. Ever met anybody like that? Come on. Cain was the first candidate for the men's home. Come on. He needed the home. Say, he needed the home. He was on the run. He was tripping. He was marked by God. He was running the streets. He was a, beg a beggar bond. He was on the run. See, and let me see. Sin will keep you on the run. You think you're running from the law? Man, you're, you're running from God. The bottom line is, there's thousands of young men in our streets, on our blocks, in, young women. They, look, they might think they're running, that they're, they're fugitives, but you know God is chasing them. Just like God was chasing you. Some of you are running from God right now in the house of God. And I'm glad you're here. Come on, somebody. Because you can't run anymore. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand of praise. No more running. Say, no more running. See, these are our next evangelists. These are our next preachers. These are our next, right, pastors and leaders. We got to get them running back from God, not from God. 
through God. Thank God we're no longer on the run. Hello. I mean, I know for me, I was always on the run. When I was in the world, I was always on the run. I was running from here. When you, when you, when you, man, when you ran into me, man, I was looking, I was watching my back. So who's chasing me? Mostly the police. Hello. Right? Oh, man, you got See, and, and to be a fugitive is not a fun thing. Right? Don't raise your hand, but how many know what I'm talking about? It's not a fun thing. You know, and, I, and, and I, I know one thing is I always had a homegirl next to me. Come on. Naomi, she was, she was down. Hello. She would hide me. Come on. Hide me in your apartment. What, can you hide me here? Right? And, 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 we were, and then they would come, you know, they'd come looking for me, and she would never rat me out. Come on, somebody. She was a homegirl. Come on. She was, she was she, and they would, they would tell her, we're going to take your kids away. We're going to do this. Right? And she said, no, I don't care. That's my man. Hello, somebody. And, and, then, and then when we would fight, you know, I mean, we start fighting, right? We start fighting. She goes, I hope they take you to jail. Come on. I hope they take you. You know, and, and then one time they did. And then she got, wait a minute, officer, wait a minute. That's my man. He didn't do nothing. She didn't say that a minute ago. Right? But she was a down home. See, because when you're running, man, you're, you, 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 can't, you can't be comfortable. You, it's like when, when, when you're not right with God, man, you're just, you're just uneasy all the time. You know you're not doing what you should be doing. You know you're not, you're not focused. You're not on the cutting edge. And some of us right now, you might be a Christian, but you're still running because you're not doing what God's called you to do. And that's why you feel uncomfortable. That's why right now you're tuning me out. You just tune me out. Hello. Oh, that's not for me. That's not for me. You're bumping your neighbor. Hello. But you need to do what God's called you to do. You need to listen to the voice of God and stop running. Tell your neighbor, stop running. Come on, say, stop running. No more running. Run to God. Run to the call of God. Run to the promise of God. Run to the power and the anointing of God. We got to run to God instead of running from God. Somebody say mega promises. See, when, you're, when God has made, given you mega promises, you have to make sure that the Holy Spirit is guiding you. Is the Holy Spirit guiding you? You know that Cain had an opportunity to do what was right. God spoke to Cain. Why are you, why are you angry at me? I didn't accept your offering, but you still got a chance. Is the men's home excited because you still got a chance? Come on, men's home, because you still got women's home. You still got a chance. You got to finish. Say finish. Because you still got a chance. See, who was guiding Cain? God warned him. He said, sin waits for you. Waits for you to fail. Its desire is for you. He said, but you should rule over it. If you do what's right, you will be accepted. Got to do what's right. Do what's right and I'll accept you. See, the hardest thing sometimes is just to do what's right. When you do what's right, God will go anywhere with you. When you do what's right, God will prosper you. God will meet your need. God will give you a family. He'll bless your life. Are you with me this morning? You got to do what's right. See, you got to learn to value what God values. What does God value? He values souls, church. He values lost and hurting people, right? He values the church. That's why it's important that you're faithful to church. And you take care of the house of God. I know just yesterday, I, I, I had the guys with me yesterday, and, and I started, you know what? The Lord convicted me. Because this is God's house. Oh, are you, let, me, let me tell you. This is God's house. This house is holy. This house is sacred. This is his holy temple. We got to take care of it. 
I said, we got to take care of it. And you have to feel that this is your church. Say, this is my church. Come on, say, this is my church. You got to take care of your church. And I took the guys. We, we, we did a whole training. I took the guys that live here. I took them around the church, and we walked through the church. And I was telling them, this is God's house. Take care of God's holy temple. It belongs to God. Don't take it lightly. Are you with me this morning? Value what God values. Take care of what God has given you. It's holy. And God will prosper you there. That's how you learn how to be successful, right? God's promises will always be successful if you do what's right. I want Adam to come on up, Adam. Because man's promises, listen to me, will always fail you. Man's promises. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, you can write it down. It says this, God is not man that he should lie. Or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not fulfill it? Will he not fulfill it, church? He's given you a promise. It might seem like it's never going to come to pass. How many of you have been there? Or it might seem like it's just so far away. Or it seems impossible. It could be your calling. It could be your purpose. See, I love, this is what I love about our church because God has given us a promise. God has given our pastor, Pastor Rick and Sister Jeannie, he's given them promises that us as their spiritual children, that we are able to receive those same promises, right? And see them come to pass. But not only see them come to pass, right? Do what's right to get the promises that are ahead of us. Visions from God turn into promises. When God reveals it, Whatever it is, it will become real. Oh, my gosh. Hallelujah. Your promise will come real. It will become real when you do what's right. Are you with me this morning? See, God's promises are his great assurances to everyone that receives them. You could be assured he's not a man. Listen to me. He's not a man that he shall lie. Amen? Come on, let's all stand. I want the worship team to come on up. Hallelujah. Just stay in the presence of God because the Spirit of God is here this morning because His promises are going out to your heart. 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 I shared this with you before and I'll share it again. I have a problem with forgetting things. Hello, somebody. Anybody have a problem with forgetting things? I, I don't know. It could be old age. I feel young, right? I don't know. Anybody ever forget some things? Say amen. Don't make me feel alone. Hello. And, you know, so, so I told you this story before, but it's, it's, it's just relevant for this. Is uh, My son always needs a haircut. Always needs a haircut. Even right now, if you see him, he needs one right now. I just thought about it. Amen. And, and Naomi is always telling me, she said, when is he going to get a haircut? When are you going to take him to get a haircut? So I'm going to take him tomorrow. Come on, somebody. How many know <laughs> Don't worry, I got him. I just say, well, don't, I got him, I got him, don't worry. He's, he's good, I'm going to give him the money, I'm going to give him, I'm going to send him to the barber right now. Then, then the next week comes, there he is with his big afro, hello. And then she'll text me, you know, my son needs a haircut. Like I lost custody all of a sudden, come on. But you know what I don't say? I never say I promise. Hello. 
Because if I say our promise, that means I will come through. Do you know that God's not even like that? God's promises will always come to pass. Regardless of how we are or what we are or what we say, what we do. Because God's promises are mega. They're perfect. He knows exactly what's he doing in your life. He knows exactly where you're at. He knows how you feel. He knows the difficult moments in your heart. He knows the battle. He knows the struggle. He knows what you're going through. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. God does not change. And his promises for your life do not change. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Because I want to say a prayer.